Good morning, y'all. Urgent news. Briefing. This message is brought to you by the House of David Bible News. Broadcast 9. The Crucifixion. Jesus was already in a bad way before he was nailed to the cross. After his trial before Pilate, he was severely flogged, a dreadful punishment, which often ended in the victim's death. Although Jesus survived the flogging, as well as the considerable mocking and maltreatment from the Roman soldiers, he was so weak that when made to carry his cross to the place of execution, after a few steps he stumbled and could carry it no further. The soldiers then made a passerby carry the cross. while Jesus himself had to be half dragged in order to reach the place just outside the city gates where the Romans carried out their crucifixion. Most people were stunned and incredulous as Jesus was led through the streets since only a limited number and those probably the most for the most part, under the influence of the Pharisees, would have been present to shout for Jesus' death. Most of the people in Jerusalem probably would not have realized what was happening until it was too late. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, <clears throat> he was taunted by various of the Pharisees for his failure to display any divine power. Yet, in the midst of this behavior and bearing of Jesus was incredibly calm. Despite his intense agony, he prayed that God would forgive his executioners, <clears throat> for he said that they did not know what they were doing. This was in marked contrast to the behavior of the two other condemned men being crucified along with Jesus. But even one of these was so impressed by Jesus as he hung on the cross, he suddenly changed his attitude and asked Jesus for forgiveness for his sins. And Jesus apparently assured him that that very day he would be in paradise with him. Various of the Pharisees and Sadducees and their supporters came and mocked Jesus for his inability to save himself. Jesus' mother and some of her relatives were also present. She was supported by John, one of Jesus' disciples, the only one of the disciples to be there. The rest not having been since Jesus' arrest the previous night. Jesus, seeing them, entrusted his mother to the keeping of John to look after her in the future. One of Jesus's, I'm sorry, over Jesus's head on the cross was a placard bearing the charge against him and it, as it was custom at the Roman executions. This read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. For it was finally on the charge of being Messiah, the King of Jews, that Jesus was condemned. Some of the chief priests objected to this wording and made representations to Pilate that it should be changed to Jesus of Nazareth, who claimed to be the king of the Jews. But Pilate, still evidently smarting from having had to give way to their demands earlier in the day, dismissed them brusquely and said that the wording would stand. Jesus was hung on the cross in mid-morning, and at noon a remarkable darkness came over the land which lasted till three in the afternoon. There was a sudden, blasting, Sirocco wind which raised clouds of flying dust and sand and also many black clouds overhead. This phenomenon lasted a full three hours, creating terrible conditions outside the walls of Jerusalem. 
At the end of this period, Jesus gave a loud cry using the words of one of the Psalms. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Although, to some of the bystanders, it sounded as though he was calling on Elijah, whom the Jews regarded as a helper in times of need. At this cry from Jesus, a soldier soaked a sponge in wine vinegar diluted with water and reached it up to his mouth at the end of the shaft, a drink intended to refresh Jesus and keep him conscious for as long as possible. But Jesus uttered another cry a few minutes later, apparently saying, finished, and then he died. Such a quick death was unusual for a crucifixion. It was possible to hang in agony for one or two days before dying. Death usually followed a long period of complete exhaustion and unconsciousness. But Jesus was already in a greatly weakened state after the flogging and general maltreatment from the Roman soldiers. Jesus' body had been taken for burial by Joseph of Arimathea, a notable member of the Sanhedrin, who was believed to have been a secret disciple of Jesus and did his best to oppose the activities of Caiaphas at the Sanhedrin trial. He was aided by Nicodemus, another eminent member of the Sanhedrin, who apparently also wished to pay his last respects to Jesus, a bold thing to do in view of his death as a heretic. Joseph had to make a special request to Pilate to get permission to bury Jesus' body which would normally be allowed for someone condemned for high treason. Okay, which would not normally be allowed for someone condemned of high treason. But Pilate seemed to be glad of this further opportunity of opposing Caiaphas' wishes, to which he had been forced to accede earlier, and he also wanted to show his reservations about Jesus' guilt. The burial was carried out, and hurriedly because of the approaching Sabbath, and Jesus was put in a rock tomb in a garden close to the city gates and to the place where he was crucified. Urgent news. The second trial before Pontius Pilate was necessary for the only the Roman governor had the power to carry out capital sentence. The Sanhedrin had contemned, condemned Jesus on religious grounds. But he was arraigned before Pilate on the political implications of being the Messiah, the one who was expected to bring G the Jews' victory over the Romans. A purely religious charge would have been of no interest to the Roman Pilate. Pilate, however, was reluctant to handle the case and was clearly disturbed and impressed by Jesus. This was an unexpected problem for Caiaphas, the high priest who had expected Pilate to ratify the Sanhedrin's ver verdict without further add, most likely on the basis of an agreement reached the previous evening. But all Pilate's efforts to have Jesus released met with concerted opposition and finally crumbled at the suggestion that his own position might be endangered. In order to avoid any trouble, Pilate gave the order for Jesus to be executed.